finally we can relax in the comfort of the studio. I'm sitting down today because we're going to talk about mastering your mix. Throughout the series, we've spent time looking at what microphones to use, how to place the microphones, different situations you might want to look at, different types of kits to get better sound. But all of this comes down to getting your mix all ready for distribution, whether it be online or broadcast. I've got a few different finished projects that we're going to deconstruct and, and look at how I've used sound to create some layers. Having an external recorder is super helpful, um, obviously for recording sounds when you're in the field, but most um, current recorders also function as a sound card or an input output device, which means I can play sounds into my computer for my edit. So perhaps I want to do a voiceover or a narration. I can squirt all this sound through my external recorder into my Mac straight onto my edit suite. So here I've got all the audio coming from, from my mixer. And underneath here, we have uh, the music bed. I use Final Cut Pro for all my editing. This will be similar on whichever software you use. They all do the same thing, but they do it slightly differently. But what we can see here on the right hand side is, is the, the WAV file that's come out of my um, recorder. I have a boom mic and I have a spare channel. Now you can see here that there's been no sound recorded on, on the boom because I didn't use a boom for, for this particular audio track. I didn't use radio mic too. I use one radio mic. But what you can see as we play through the audio, of obviously the levels are bouncing around and we can see that it's hitting this really particular well. track. So you want to avoid voices peeking into that red when you record it on camera and then when you also you bring it into the edit suite. And what I've done afterwards is I've dropped in some audio here and you can see if I, if I expand it, so it comes in a nice clean level and comes in and as people start talking, usually I do this right about the fade uh, starts to happen or, or where all the cut is on the music. So there we've got the music bed. Now that runs all the way through as much, very, very quietly. And the music I've got set here at minus 25 on my timeline, but that runs all the way through very quietly. What I've put on my edit suite for you to see is a short drone film that I made um, flying over the River Dee in Chester. Now, Obviously, with drone footage, there is no audio recording. So what people tend to do is they edit relatively OK, then they slap some music on, which may or may not be appropriate for the type of content. Now, that's fine and it's OK. But it doesn't feel rich. There's no layers to it. It doesn't feel like you're there. It feels a little bit disconnected. So what I've started to do is not only fly the drone where I want to fly it or where I need to fly it, but I've also recording audio down on the ground where or near to where the drone has been flying. The first sort of audio track we've got is sounds of the, of the local area. So I kind of just recorded this. Now it's very subtle. I mean, I've, I've got it at very low level. It's birds tweeting, that kind of stuff, the village near the river. But this thing's missing. So what can we see? Well, if we go along the flight, we can see some traffic and there's some traffic. So let's put on the traffic noise here. Right, it's very, very subtle. And you're trying to sort of match it with what the viewer can see. And then we fade out that traffic noise because we've passed that part of the bridge. And as we come to the next bridge, you can see we're flying, flying, flying. And then again, we'll start bringing up the traffic. Now it's a busier bridge, so there's louder traffic. On this bridge, we can see people. So let's, let's record some people walking across and let's float those in on another layer. So now we have... If you look carefully, we can see a few birds flying over here. So why don't we add some, some sort of seagull sounds to this? You can see someone rowing. So hey, let's record it. And actually he does two, two pulls with his oars. So I've got here, if you look, I've got one layer finishing 
here fades out and the next layer starting. So it now sounds like this. There's one. And there's two. We, we may as well add some little bit of music. Now the music will soften all the other sounds so they're not as harsh. So if we add the music and drop the level a bit, here we go. Of course, then you throw in some graphics at the end. There you go. Nice little graphic effect and that wipes on, wipes off. There's nothing complicated about this edit timeline. It's cuts with fades. And what I've done is add all those different textures, all those different layers of audio, which you should always be thinking about when you're out filming. You should be going out, recording your audio separately, mixing it, matching it to the camera afterwards, because that is going to give you the best final mix. And ultimately, the reason we all do this is because we want to deliver, I want to deliver a product to my clients, which is kick ass. I want them to look at that and go, that looks great and it sounds great. Thank you so much for joining me and CVP and Sennheiser through the last six months. Good luck with your audio journey. I can't wait to hear and see some of the work that you'll produce. It's been an absolute blast. Take care and see you soon.